So we'd like to welcome everybody today to uh, this Q4's webinar that we're sponsoring. Um, it's been a little bit since we've done one, so but we're glad to get things kicked back off again. We think we have um, some a series here of things that will be very informative to our customers, and it's good to see you all um, and to be with you, uh, even if it's virtually. I know some of you have had users conferences this year. We've had some Facebook events, we've done a few things, so it's just good to, to be with everybody again. We have reached out and invited a special guest today. Uh, this is Sharon uh, Vogel, who um, will be helping present in uh, this webinar today. And, uh, you know, she's got a, a unique uh, skill set here that I don't think is often found. And so we, we thought it would be just a really good opportunity to allow her to share some of her um, insights and things that would be very in, informative and helpful to our customers. Um, and so, you know, she's she's got this background where um, um, where she, you know, she's been in the flooring industry Kind of like Trent and I, you know, for a long, long time, and, but also has been out and done some other things and has a wide range of experience and brought some of those things back to the flooring industry. And so uh, without uh, taking too much more time, I'm going to let uh, Shannon um, uh, introduce herself. She's the owner of Reach Social Media and welcome, Shannon, for, uh, for this time that you have with us. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, I'm gonna switch over and um, just somebody let me know if you can't see my screen, I'm just gonna assume that you can and we'll get rolling. I think you're good, I think we can see it. Great. So today we wanna to talk about all things social media and I wanna start out by telling you I know that social media can be intimidating. So if you're here and you have no idea what you're doing, I applaud you for showing up. If you're here and you know a little bit, you're gonna know a little bit more when you leave. And if you are advanced, hopefully you get, you know, time to just kick your feet up and maybe learn one thing or two. But this is social media, something that, like I said, can be very intimidating, but I want to give you some tips and tricks and tools to help you succeed in either doing your own social media or throwing your hands up and going, oh my gosh, I need help. So we're going to review some best practices, which means basically the things that I've been asked over the last 15 years. I get asked pretty much the same thing over and over. So um, I'm gonna try to provide you with all of those. And we're gonna go through each platform and talk about what the differences are and what makes them you know, better for different scenarios. We're gonna talk a little bit about time management and then we're gonna to touch on the, the sensitive subject of reputation management. And hopefully you'll walk away with some tools where you feel a little bit more confident about um, understanding what to do with negative and positive reviews. Hey Shannon, before you yes. go into all that, I know I introduced you. Oh, here you go. I was going to say, tell us who you are before you go into all that. <laughs> so I, um, I want to tell you why you're here. And then my next slide is always, I want to tell you why you should trust me. Okay. So the short version is I've been in construction for 25 years. My dad was a builder. My mom ran the books. My aunt had the design center. And I tried to go to college to major in psychology to go be a psychiatrist. And my daddy had a different plan. He wanted me to come back and work for the family business. And I said, no, I don't want to go back to small town and I don't want to do flooring. Well, guess what? Like most of you, you probably went and had a different path and uh, ended up in flooring. And whether you try to leave or not, we, you know, it's a, it's a family that I'm grateful that I ended up in and I wouldn't change my path for a million bucks. But what's good for you is that I have a concentration in human behavior. I studied why people act the way they do. So, that was my college experience. And then I've done everything from retail, commercial, design, flooring, sales. I've built design centers. I think I've done everything except I haven't been a manufacturer's rep yet. But I say all that to say that I know where you are. I know your struggles. I know your pain points. I know your customer. I know their pain points and their struggles. So my job is to help you bridge all of that and deliver the information that's going to help your customers make a connection with you in order to choose you. So um, I've been doing this a long time. I eat, drink, and sleep it. It's all I do, and um, you'll you'll get to see through this. I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, I get a little fired up, and I'll probably crack some jokes, and I maybe um, if I slip with a little construction language, please forgive me. And um, 
that's a little bit about that's who I am and why I'm here. Awesome. Okay, so let's jump right in. So there are a lot of different social media sites out there. I don't want you to get overwhelmed and think that you have to be a master of all of them and be on all of them. So we're going to review which ones are out there. And then I want you to decide which ones are important for you. And one of the basic rules that I have that I tell everybody is only do what you can do well. So if you walk away from this and you know, you find out that if you're a flooring contractor versus a retailer, then you may be only want to be on LinkedIn versus everything else. If you're, you know, straight up retail and you have a story to tell, then, you know, we'll talk about which platforms to be on. So we're going to cover Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, a little bit about reputation management. And um, I'll just tell you quickly, Google My Business is just for company information updates and keeping your hours updated. So that's not, it's not really a social site, but it is something that you want to take into consideration because when people go to leave you reviews, you need that part of your business um, up and running and taken care of. So I want to start with some fundamentals and some basics. Um, a lot of people are under the impression that if you jump on social media and you start posting and saying things, then all of a sudden, all these customers are going to come through the door and you're going to get rich and make all this money off of this free platform. And I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. Uh, this is not a platform where you want to jump on and say, hey, I've got hardwood for $2.99 because nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear that you've got hardwood for $2.99 unless you are, there's always an exception, unless you are a cash and carry quick and dirty and you're here just to sell things and get them out the door. Most of you, I think, are here as full retailers who also provide installation. So we want to talk about what what you should be doing on social media rather than showing up and just hoping that you can talk about yourself a lot and uh, and get a lot of customers so if you think about social media it is like a successful relationship so if you have a good relationship with your husband wife spouse person partner think about what makes that relationship work you don't talk about yourself all the time you have to ask about the other person you have to show up you have to send the flowers ask the questions do all the things a, a good relationship requires work and it's not one-sided so I want you first and foremost to remember that social media is about relationships and not about selling. So our goal is to inspire people, start a conversation that then turns into a relationship that hopefully ultimately ends up in a referral. The second point I want to make is I want you to think about what your audience needs, not what you want to tell them. So if you need leads, like everybody needs leads, don't be desperate and say, you know, I've got hardwood for $2.99, come buy from me. That's not what people want to hear. They want to be inspired. And I tell people when you're thinking about who your audience is on social media, number one, look at the back end of your, say your Facebook page and look at your insights. It'll tell you if you have more men versus women who are your target demographic, who you're actually reaching and what age they are. So I want you to think about when you're doing your content, what is somebody, what's their life like? And I like to paint the picture of Pretty much i'm your target customer i'm 47 years old i own a home i can you know afford new flooring and i love my home and i love home decor right so what happens i go to work all day i do you know i do the hard stuff i do life and then maybe six seven eight o'clock at night after dinner i've got my feet up on the coffee table my ipad in one hand a glass of wine in the other hand and i'm scrolling through on social media to see who went out to dinner who had a baby and who ate a grilled cheese sandwich and I fully expect every business owner on this right now to be rolling your eyes. I want you to roll your eyes because you don't care who is going out to dinner and having a baby and eating a grilled cheese sandwich, but your people do, your social media consumers do. So when they're seeing who went out to dinner, who had a baby, who ate a grilled cheese sandwich, you get to very gently insert your message into that conversation. So you're getting to somebody in a mindset where they're not expecting to be sold. They're in their happy place, they're in their me time, how are you going to show up and give them the information that they need in order for them to choose you? If you'll remember that and you don't remember anything else I say today, you'll be successful. The other thing I get all the time is everybody thinks that social media is this quick and dirty thing that you do on your phone. You put out one post and it's over. If you do social media properly, it is a time investment because it requires thinking, planning, posting, monitoring the conversation. It's, um, it's something that takes more time than most people realize. So that doesn't mean that you need to hire somebody full time and have a full time person devoted to your social media. If that's not in your budget or you're not prepared for that, I just want to make sure that you understand that it's something that does take time. The other thing I want to make sure you understand is that when you put out con great content, 
the social sites are only going to show it to about five to seven percent of that audience even though you worked hard to get that audience and to get people in that's how they make their money is by advertising so you're either going to need to boost a post or use full-fledged advertising which to me is one of the least expensive ways that you can get in front of a lot of people that either already know you and like you or that don't know about you yet that are in your local area so if you're frustrated with your social media it's probably because you're not spending any money on advertising so you can get started by spending five dollars on a boosted post see how many people that reaches and i guarantee you're going to be like what can i get with ten dollars then what can i get with fifty dollars and then you know the conversation rolls over into full-blown advertising so if you'll think about these four things as we move forward i think um, you'll have a much better experience with your social okay first one is facebook facebook a little bit of history about social media if you think about which sites came out first facebook was kind of the og so people you know my age are on it people that are older are still on it because they all came to facebook to go find their kids and their grandkids well the kids and the grandkids left but the older people stayed so facebook is a great platform if you want to reach people in my opinion that can actually afford new floors so the fastest growing demographic last time i checked was um, women aged 55 to 65. so think about that when you're trying to decide what kind of message you're you're going to put out there Facebook is your platform where you get to tell your story. Talk about who you are, what your differentiators are, why you got into business, who your staff is, show the company dog, that kind of thing, but tell your story. And this is an opportunity for you to get brand awareness, for people to see your name, because your icon shows up every time you do a post. So when they're scrolling through to see who went out to dinner and who had a baby, we want your logo to be seen as often as possible. So when there's a caveat to that, so hold on to that. So when they see your logo over and over and over, that's gonna help with brand awareness. But when you start telling your story in your post, that's gonna help them make a connection with you. People will buy from you just from the sheer fact if they can make a connection with you. So for example, if you post a picture of somebody, your team, and there's somebody with you know short, sometimes I have pink hair, like if somebody's got colored hair and big chunky glasses, I'm like, those are my people, they get me, that's all I need to choose you. So our goal here is to tell your story, start a conversation, try to get some engagement and build a relationship. And Facebook is your honeypot for doing that. The question I get all the time is that's great, Shannon, I understand it, but what do I post? So here are a couple of ideas of things that you can do for content ideas. Everybody loves a trend. I have not met one woman in America that doesn't want free design advice. So talk about what's trending. You know what's trending because you know what you're buying. You know what's hot because your rep just brought it in. So talk about things that you know are hot and trending and tell them that so that you are the authority of, and you're the connection to what's trending. Next, people love to know what's going on behind the scenes. People love to know the owner. Like think when you go to a restaurant and you get to see what's going on in the kitchen or you, you know the owner or the general manager comes out. When you know what's going on behind the scenes, you feel more connected and trust that company more. Use your manufacturer's images. They have libraries and libraries and libraries of their product in really good pictures. So go to your manufacturers and say, hey, I just took the social media class and I really want to start participating. And one of the things that resonated with me is I want to start talking about products. How can I get access to your images? They, if you tell them, I've got to talk about somebody. I'd like to talk about you. Please make it easy for me. They will get you access to their images. Some people have like, um, you know, Sean Mohawk have the logins where you can get uh, images straight from there, Stant and some other brands like that. Um, but ask your reps of the best way to get images. Sometimes I'll just share a Dropbox folder with you, but ask them to do the heavy lifting for you because we all know how hard it is to get images from the homeowner afterwards. Talk about holidays. Um, it doesn't, I have, some customers that give me a hard time they're like i don't want you i'm not paying you to post about holidays and i say okay well i'm going to run a report for it for you and show you that you can't talk about flooring all the time when you do things like say happy holidays or you know happy thanksgiving people's brains automatically go oh that feels good i'm going to like it like we're like monkeys that are trained to hit the like button when we like things or when they feel good and then you're going to get the mental credit for that so you don't always have to talk about flooring you can say happy holidays or you can say you know hey we're closed for the holidays because it's important for our company to let our family our employees spend time with their family talk about products that come in um if you 
If you want to do it simply, just post a picture of a product and talk about why it's so great. If you want to knock it out of the park, have one of your salespeople take a picture with the product and talk about why they like it. If you want to knock it out of the park even more, do a video of when a product comes in, take the video of somebody unboxing the product and talk about I love this tile so much. I could really envision, envision this in a custom shower or on a backsplash. Help them envision, help your customer envision what to do with that product because you're the expert. They don't know what to do because they don't buy flooring all the time. If you show them what to do with that product, they're going to be more likely to choose you, connect with that, and potentially even buy a more expensive product because you told them it was trending, it was new, it's hot, and you have it. Everybody loves motivational quotes. Again, that um, like button that we're trained to push when we like things. If you do an inspirational or motivational quote, that is going to give you the mental credit for that. The most popular thing you can do on social media is pets and babies. If you have a company dog, post about the dog often. Show the dog in the office, show the dog in the warehouse, show the dog comfortably resting in the showroom. If you don't have a company dog, then post pictures of pets like at the water bowl where you know there's water all over the floor and then talk about the benefits of waterproof flooring. Talk about the benefits of LVP. Everybody loves pets and babies. Pets, you don't need permission. Babies, you need permission. Don't post a picture of anybody's baby that you don't have permission. Mamas get cranky crazy bear if they see their kid on the internet and they're not cool with that. So just ask permission. When you ask permission to take a picture of a customer, a baby, a person, anybody like that, don't do it in like a legal kind of way. Do it in a, hey, we'd love to feature you on your so on our social media. Can we take your picture? And what's going to happen is they're going to go, okay, that's great. Like you, that, you're basically telling someone you think they're pretty enough or popular enough to be on social media. So then they're going to go like your page. Then they're going to go look for their post, and then they're going to like it, comment on it, and share it with their friends, which is what we're here for. Video is the hottest thing that you can do. The reason video is so hot is because people went from reading this many words on a blog to this many words on Facebook to this many words on Instagram to this many words on Twitter. And our brains are like goldfish. We have the attention span of an eight second goldfish. So now people need things to move and bounce to get their attention. So if you can utilize video, then that's going to be something that kind of sets you apart from everybody else. Show off your people. It will make your people feel good. It will make your community feel connected to your people. And you can do easy things like say um, feature. It doesn't have to be an employee of the month. It can just be like meet the team and try to have some fun and ask questions like, you know, ask a serious question like how long have you been with the company or why do you love flooring? But let the third question be something fun like what's your favorite snack at 2 a.m.? If I see, if I read that and I see somebody that either looks like me or feels like me or I feel like they get me, or you know, say they say that they also like to crush up Oreos on strawberry ice cream with caramel sauce on top, I'm gonna go, oh my gosh, they know me. So now I feel comfortable going in and letting them choose something for my home because they get me. So it's another way to make a human connection. So so yes. I'm, I'm hearing here, you're trying to humanize the business <laughs> or you yes. know, you're trying to connect the business in a different way, not just in a business way, which I guess I'm, you know, too old school. I'm getting too old here. You know, I, I, I guess I don't get this quite like somebody like maybe my daughter, you know, that's, uh, you know, 25 years younger than me or whatever. So um, I, I guess this is the psychology part of the whole, the whole thing here. Is that, is that what you're telling me? Yes. So if you think about it, people, are going to shop for flooring. They're going to get online. They're going to Google whatever they're going to Google, right? Then they're going to find your website and they're going to see what your marketing company wrote about your about us. They're going to see some products and you know, what's the difference between you and everybody else? You know, everybody else, everybody's got the same kind of stuff, right? When they want to get to know you to decide if they are going to choose you to let you in their home, that's when they're going to go to social. So what story are you telling when they get there? So, We'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but when you have a mix of content that shows that you are there for them to inspire them, to teach them, to be a resource for them, and that you have stability and you're a good company, that's all it takes for them to see that story in order to choose you. And not to leave out, I don't want to leave out men at all because I know men do make decisions, but a lot of times it's the woman making the decision. And back to the psychology thing, if you think about when a woman lets a trade in her home to do something, 
that's where she raises her kids, cooks dinner, maybe works from home. There's a lot going on. It's not a house to her, it's a home. So when someone comes in to do something to that home, she needs to feel comfortable from every aspect of it, from the person helping her choose that product, because everything goes around that with, you know, what are my neighbors gonna say? What's my mother-in-law gonna say when she comes over for Thanksgiving? How am I gonna feel every day with these new floors? all the way to did the installer show up in a nice shirt make me feel safe and vacuum and show that he respected my home he or she respected my home on the way out the door so to answer your question long winded yeah yes. no and, and maybe a follow-up to that are you saying that facebook is prim primarily women that are using is that is it mostly that or it so it depends there it doesn't matter how many women are on facebook it matters how many women are in your facebook community so if you go and look at your insights on the back end, it'll tell you of your fans, say you've got 300 fans on, friend, fans on Facebook, it will tell you how many of them are women and how many are men and what age they are. So if you happen to have more men, then your audience needs to be targeted, your content needs to be targeted more towards men. But you also have to watch it because as it grows, it will change. So it, you need to talk to who your community already is built out of. But in general, is, is Facebook, Facebook used more by women than men or how, what does that look like? For home purchases, yes. For looking at things about the home, yes. Okay, great. So then uh, thank you for pausing and asking a question. No, no, I, I'm just, uh, you're talking to a novice here and, and I'm the worst offender at all the, all my customers here they're probably like, yeah, you're terrible at Facebook, right? They're telling, they're probably saying that to me right now, so. A lot of them are just like you. That's the reason I literally have a company and a job is because most of the business owners don't have time, don't know how, and know that it changes all of the time. And it's not something they care to keep up with. And that's why I tell you, business owners, roll your eyes at me every time I say, you've got to do this, this, and this. I'm not saying you've got to do it, and I'm not saying you've got to be on it. I'm saying your company needs to be on it and it needs to be done well if you want to get all the benefits of, of social media. But by no means am I saying, you know, you're not enough if you don't know how to, if, you, if you're not sitting around at nine o'clock at night instead of watching ESPN, seeing who went out to dinner. I'm not asking you to I'm do that. Just saying, I'm just saying that you're, you're, uh, you're pricking me a little bit, you know, you're poking me saying <laughs> I, I could do this a little bit better, so. Thank you. you no, know, and you're not alone. I, I haven't met one person. Maybe I met, so maybe I met two in 15 years that are doing it so well that I have nothing, nothing to say and no way to help them. So that's why I think this webinar is so important to help people get comfortable with it and feel more comfortable. And again, I'll try to remind you throughout the thing. Don't get overwhelmed. Just take if you take one nugget away today and do a little bit better, then watch it again in a month and do a, another nugget. I'm, I am overwhelming you with a lot of information. This is like drinking champagne out of a fire hose. It seems like a really good idea, but you know, you're going to be a little dizzy at the end. So the thing that I get asked next the most is that's great. If I put out good content, when do I put it out to make sure it gets seen? So I'm going to tell you what the industry says, but I'm also going to tell you to use your brain. So this slide is for when you should post. I tell everybody to post minimum of one time a week, ideally three times a week. Some people in the rare occasion, for some reason, their audience wants to hear from them every single day. You got to look at your insights on the back end to see how many times people want you to post. If you start posting too much and you start losing people, then hallelujah, you don't have to come up with as much content. But you want to show up often enough so it doesn't look like you're out of business. And especially a lot of people with after COVID, I go look at their pages and they haven't posted since 2020. I get it. You had a thousand other things to do to keep the doors open. But try to get on, if you're one of those people, try to do it once a month and then try to get to a point where you can do it at least once a week. If you have somebody to help you, try to get it three times a week, but just show up as often as you can show up and represent yourself well. The standard is to post between one and four Wednesday through Sunday. However, I want you to think about the type of post that you're doing. So think about the Susie Hummer with the feet up on the coffee table, drinking a glass of wine, going through her iPad. A lot of, for my customers, a lot of times I'll post at six, seven, eight o'clock at night because that's when she's in her me time. So think about your audience and post when you think they might be available or they might be interested in this kind of information. But if that's too overwhelming, just get a really good post out and let your, let your statistics help you later. One universal thing to pay attention to is if you think about when people get on social media, 
So say you're at work and you um, have a project, then you've got a meeting at, you're working on a project at two, you've got a meeting at three, you finish at 2.50, what are you gonna do? Everybody's gonna get on their phone for 10 minutes and kill time. You're gonna go to the bathroom and play on Facebook. Chances are you're probably doing both. So if you post at 45 to 50, 55 minutes at the hour, you're gonna catch people when they're, you know, just tooling around on social media, or like I said, after work hours. We'll talk a little bit in a minute about planning and scheduling this out with a strategy so that you don't have to freak out and sit at your desk every Monday morning and go, what did she say? What do I do? I've got the warehouse screaming at me. I can't think of what to do. If you plan ahead, I can help you maybe um, alleviate some of that anxiety. Right now in the industry for the first time, there's so much conversation going on in Facebook groups. Um, I don't, I'm not aligned with any of these. I don't endorse any of these. I'm just telling you these resources are out there for you to jump in and ask questions about what's going on in your business. So business owners, this may be the one thing you do wanna participate in social media. You may wanna join, get in for Facebook groups, but nobody, you don't even have to post anything on your personal. You don't even have to look at your newsfeed but it's a really great way to ask a lot of people a specific question in the industry to get some answers. So this is um, a list of some of the groups that, that I'm aware of. Okay, next is Instagram. Two things about Instagram. Everybody got really excited when they came out and they wanted to put all their eggs in that basket because they thought, well, this is new and I missed the Facebook train, so I'm gonna do the new thing and see if I can do that. That didn't work out so well because Instagram is a little tougher than Facebook because it's all visual. So people want to see photos and videos and they want to see what's happening right now. They want to see like the pulse of what's going on right now. So on Facebook, where you get to use, you know, words and a picture to tell your story on Instagram, you got to start picture first. So if you have those relationships with your manufacturers where you can get images, great. If you have someone, in the store that can take pictures of what's going on in the store, fantastic. If you have a process where you get the estimator or installer or whoever to take the before picture, go to Suzy homeowner after the job is done. Not, you can get a picture from the installer when it's finished, but like her pictures aren't gonna be back on the wall and the towels aren't gonna be back on the towel bar. Go to her afterwards and say, hey, we really wanna feature you on our social media with a before and after because your project turned out so great and I'm not talking about a 12 by 12 room of beige carpet. I'm talking about like a cool shower or a pattern carpet or something, something really pretty. Go to her and say, when you get everything put back together, please send us a picture and we'll feature it on our social media. And again, you just told her she was pretty. She was smart. You approve of her. She's going to go like your page. She's going to like the content and then go tell all of her friends to like it. So you're going to get a lot more exposure and you're going to get images for your portfolio that you can also put on your website. So <laughs> Instagram is your opportunity to tell your story visually. Uh, a lot of designers, if you serve the A&D community, are on Instagram. If you want to show what's hot and new and inspiring, then use Instagram. I'm gonna touch on hashtags for just a second. Everybody either hates them or doesn't understand them. I don't Instagram. understand them. Look, you're not alone. <laughs> they, they did a really, huge disservice to not explaining the point of them when they came out. So all a hashtag is, you don't have to buy anything, sign up for anything, go to any website. You literally put the pound sign in front of a word or a series of words with no spaces. The whole point is when, so that you can go on a social media site with the millions of conversations that are happening and narrow it down to just what you want to see. So next time you get on any social media site, go in the search box and type in hashtag flooring or floors or something that you're really interested in like motorcycles or house plans. And it will show you that it's basically pulling out of all the noise out there. It's pulling just the post that somebody has added the pound sign and floors or flooring. So if you're going to use them, don't go crazy because you can use 29 of them. Don't go posting all these crazy hashtags that don't mean anything. Use the ones that are actually appropriate like floors or flooring if you show a picture of carpet don't hashtag hardwood just because you sell it hashtag it, and just to get started just do floors flooring and whatever product you're talking about if you want to take it one step further you can get cute and clever um, you can add things like shop local or you can be some people are cute and they say little funny phrases just to kind of make the point but from a basic standpoint hashtags are a functional search tool that's all they are. 
you don't have to know anything. You don't have to do anything. You literally just have to be able to type the pound sign in front of a word. So don't use too many. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to read through them. And I have yet to meet a woman or man that is looking to, to buy flooring that starts with looking for a hashtag. Because when somebody looks for the hashtag, they're going to see everything that everybody in the country is posting. So it's not really helping you out for anything other than them getting inspired. What's going to help you is helping them good content that's going to make them want to choose you. So don't like, don't get hung up on hashtags if, and especially don't put them on Facebook. People, you can put one or two, but for the most part, people on Facebook want to read full sentences. They don't, they don't want to see hashtags. Young people want to see hashtags. So you keep those to Instagram. So a lot like Facebook, when you're posting things that are on Instagram, you want things that are visual. This is where it's a little bit more fun. I don't ever recommend like, I still say, keep it professional. Like, I don't, I don't think it's a good business practice to be like super cute and silly and make your, have an association with your business looking silly. I'm saying like fun, like a cute dog or, um, you know, where it involves more people like a customer shout out a picture with, you know, you shaking hands or hugging a customer. Anything that you can do that involves humans, pets, or something visual and attractive, that's what you want to do on Instagram. So it's very similar to, um, to Facebook. And there's one difference where on Instagram, there's a, an app called Repost that if you want to take away from this meeting that you want to be on Instagram, but you're not really sure what you're doing, you can pay like five bucks a month and it will allow you to repost things like from your manufacturers. That's a good like baby step start you know, dip your toe in, but try to get over that process pretty quickly because you don't want to give the manufacturers the credit. You want your brand and your team and your store to get the credit. But I understand that if you need somewhere to start small, you can go take what they're doing and reshare that and just use that to get started. So on Instagram, you can post a little more often, but don't overshare because it makes you look desperate. You don't want to look like you have too much time on your hands and all you're doing is sitting around posting and looking for um, looking for work. So try to find that balance of um, once a day at the most or the general rule that I give everybody, the target is three times a week. If you want to, if you're a starter beginner, just do a post on Instagram and be happy with it and move on. If you are intermediate, then you can start paying attention to what your grid looks like, which is the cool thing to do. I think it's not that important for the amount of time and brain energy that it's going to do to you unless you have somebody that's doing it full time and that's important to you don't worry so much about the grid if you want to be advanced or intermediate and you want to use stories and highlights those are things that um, they're features on instagram but they disappear so i have a hard time recommending to people that they do something and invest in content that's going to go away so i'm going to let you decide if that is something that works for you and your community or not um, but for the most part just stick to getting out a really good post on Instagram and try not to post your post on Instagram with hashtags and then share it directly to Facebook. Take the time to do it separately if you're going to use hashtags. But if you, the only way that you can get started and do it is to start with Instagram and push it to Facebook, then just lay off the hashtags and don't, um, don't junk up your, your, con your copy. Okay, so Facebook and Instagram are the two big ones that if you were to ask me, what should I do? I'd probably tell you Facebook first. I'd like to have a longer conversation with you, but I'd probably tell you Facebook and then Instagram because those are the two big and hot ones for straight up retail. But there is a tremendous opportunity with Pinterest that a lot of people don't realize. So if you see a woman on Pinterest, like we are on there for like five hours at a time and the next thing you know, you're eating a salad out of a mason jar and there's a craft room with like, you know, 90 hot glue guns in it. And sometimes we make stuff, sometimes we don't. Pinterest is an incredibly powerful visual tool. And this is kind of an advanced thing, but even if you just let this plant a seed and you do something with it later, I just want you to know about it. So if you use Pinterest for business and you use it as part of the sales process, so if you got a really good salesperson that, you know, does all the right things, like asks the question, like what, what's your lifestyle? Like how many kids do you have dogs? Do you have anybody in a wheelchair, mother-in-law that what's your lifestyle like? And you get in the rapport of saying, you know, I want to know more about who you are. Then you realize that they haven't done this in a long time and they don't know what they're doing. So they're probably going to come in and say they want the same beige tile that their neighbor has because 
they can visualize that that worked out well for them. This is your opportunity, if you do it properly, to set up a Pinterest account where you visually create boards that guide the customer through the journey that you want them to go through. And I'm guessing I might need to back up. If you don't understand what Pinterest is, imagine taking 500 magazines, tearing out all the pretty pictures and putting them on individual bulletin boards that are categorized, except it's on the internet. So instead of somebody having to come to your conference room and look through a lookbook or look at your wall full of inspiration, it's on the internet. So you'll create different boards like kitchen, bathroom, backsplash, bedroom, carpet, you know, by product. And then when you're in the sales process, ideally you say, okay, let's go through our Pinterest account. Say you're doing a bathroom. And she said, you know, I want a base tile. Okay, great. Let's look and get some inspiration. So you visually walk her through the process of showing, okay, here's a base tile laid straight. That's cool, right? Here's a bigger base tile with maybe some range. Here's a bigger beige tile that's now on the diagonal that has a $40 a foot shower floor that's a mosaic. Then the next picture you show is with a Lacello strip. Then the next one's got a shampoo niche. Then the next one's got a bench with a different tile on top. And the next thing you know, you have visually taken her from wanting a $1.99 basic beige tile to a $10,000 shower and she's not exhausted and your salesperson has not dragged out 500 samples that they now have to put back at the end of the day. Just simply showing and saying, this is what you can do, will shorten the whole sales process and in general make them, encourage them to buy a more expensive product with a more expensive installation. You can also use it to find out what they don't want. So if you start out the appointment with, let me learn a little bit about you and then let's look at our Pinterest account and say, okay, she goes, I love this, I hate this, I love this, I hate this. Your salesperson can learn just as much about what they don't want and make it a lot easier to get it in the hands of them for what they do want. So when you're creating boards, if you have designers as customers create boards that are for them to utilize, you can create boards that are all product. So like all LVP, all hardwood, all carpet. Mood boards are really hot right now, which just means like a lifestyle board of showing different products that all work together. Show room scenes or different areas so that people can envision what it's going to look like overall because you know people can't visualize. Show your project portfolio because when people see that you are the one that took a before builder white bathroom and turned it into a personal spa retreat, that's all they need to choose you. So show the work that you've actually done. Do video if you're into it. Um, show different installation ideas. So instead of sketching on a piece of paper, you know, you could turn it on diagonal or do a herringbone, have that already done and show them the options that they can do with more expensive installations and always um, show trends. If you don't want to do Pinterest that way, you can do it the regular way, which is have boards about everything from that have nothing to do with flooring. So Halloween decorating ideas, Christmas tree ideas, anything that a woman is going to get, or a man, sorry, it's going to get inspiration for, and then give you that mental credit for it. So if you are a Pinterest beginner and this resonates with you, get on there, create, you know, five or 10 boards, put five or 10, maybe 20 pins, different pictures on there, and then just start to build it out how you feel comfortable and how you think it's going to inspire somebody. If you want to do it the other way, then build it out as a sales tool. So on Pinterest, if you want to do it daily, try to do at least three a day that it'll take you 15 seconds. Um, ideally, you want to do 20 per week. You can do that throughout the week or you can do it all at one time. If you want to be advanced, you can add descriptions to your pins to tell people what you want them to see. Because if you do a beautiful room scene, they're going to be like, where'd you get that lamp? It's better if you can tell them, you know, this room feels so warm because of the richness of hardwood, that kind of thing. One sentence, no big deal. Another intermediate to advanced tip is when you're building out your boards on Pinterest, the individual pins, you can either upload a picture or you can go to your website and install the pin it button and just Google how to install the pin it button. And you push that button and it will pull up every image from your site. You stick that on a board and then everywhere that that pin goes and gets repinned or looked at or anything that happens to it, the source is always your website. So it always comes back to you. If you want to, again, do a little bit more advanced than most people is create clever board names. 
like, you know, something about suds for the bathroom or, you know, instead of just kitchen. If you want to keep it super professional, you can just say kitchen, bathroom, backsplash, or you can have fun and do like for the laundry room and board, you can say loads of fun or something like that and just have a little bit more personality. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Twitter. And we'll jump, and we'll jump into Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Okay, Twitter got I, this bad reputation that hashtags did. Nobody explained it when it got started, so it got the worst rap. I'm going to tell you why it's good. You know, People the like, data center for Twitter is right here next to our office. Is it really? Yeah. Sorry. That is it's in the same place where we have our all of our Q Cloud stuff. Um, so that we, is. We share That's the cool. same data center, but I'm sure technical people don't want to, you know, this is, this is a social media, not a technical thing, but just so you know, I call that shit information and I love it. <laughs> so Twitter, like I said, got a bad rap because nobody knew what to do with it. What's great about Twitter. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest all the time. My husband in the morning gets on Twitter and sees everything that's going on in the world because you can only use a small amount of characters to say what you want to say. There's no, I went out to dinner. We had the most fun. Here's the backstory. It's, this is what happened in one sentence or two sentences. So he loves it because he gets a lot of information really, really quickly and there's no fluff. So if you're on Twitter, two things, you can either create original content for Twitter I haven't found anybody yet that has this massive Twitter following for a retailer. So it is okay to push the same content from Facebook to Twitter. You might have to shorten it a little, but it's okay if you want to just be on Twitter and be out there for the sake of being on it. But as a person, if you think that you might want to try a social media site, try Twitter and go in the search box and either type in a word that you like and probably either something about your business or type in something like if you love gardening or motorcycles or, you know, smoke grill smokers or whatever, and just know that you can basically by keyword, take the million billions and billions and billions of conversations and strip it down to just what's being talked about around that keyword. So if you want to be a Twitter rock star, go on Twitter and look and see what people are saying about flooring and people, you know, say that, the whole entire design community is saying, I'm so sick of seeing this kind of hardwood. Okay. Noted. I'm not going to put this in my designer section. Like you can, Twitter's your listening platform. So I'm on Twitter and I, I rarely post. I only, I use it for listening. So I like to, to get the pulse of what's going on in the world and in the industry via Twitter. It's like tapping 10 million phones by keyword and only listening to the conversations that you want. So if you don't like a lot of the other social media sites because they're too fluffy and fruity, then try Twitter because it's short, sweet and to the point. When you're on Twitter, you can do short company updates, FAQs. You can still always inspire people. Informational things like we're closed for Labor Day more you know keep it more related to news and things that again are short statements than you can get out you can also use twitter if like i do like i don't put a lot of original content out there i'll go and retweet something like i'll retweet something floor covering weekly said or something you know stanton posted or you know one of the manufacturers and then you sort of get the credit for what they said without having to come up with original content so when you think twitter just think quick dirty short and to the point Twitter, you can post a hundred times a day if you wanted to and nobody cares because there's so much talking out there. You're not going to oversaturate it. Um, they have a rule this at least five per week and up to five per day. Do the best you can. If you can get one a month out, that's fantastic. If you can get three a week, that's great. Try to remember to use it for listening, just like a relationship. The more you listen, the more you learn. If you are advanced, there's a way to create what's called Twitter list so that you only see the content that you want to see. It's a hand selected amount of people that you just get to see what they're saying. If you are terrified of it, but you still want to dip your toe in, just go retweet a couple of things and you are still visible in the Twitter world. Okay. Another one that is very much overlooked is LinkedIn because everybody thinks you're only on LinkedIn. If you're looking for a job, if you are hiring, and that is simply not true. That is one tiny part of what they do. 
LinkedIn is your all business, all the time, business only platform. If you want industry news and want to know what's going on with companies and people in the industry, get on LinkedIn, fill out your profile completely, just so it's just a, one thing you can do that'll take 30 minutes, makes you look more legit. You don't have to post anything, but go through and follow or connect with the people that you are interested in knowing what's going on in the industry. And you're going to want to connect wisely, which means don't connect with people that you don't know, only connect with people that you have met, shaken hands with, exchanged an email, a business card, met at a networking event. Because if you, A, LinkedIn will punish you for it, but if you keep your feed to the companies that you care about and the people that you care about, you will enjoy LinkedIn, the as soon as you decide that it's not in your mind, that it's not a social media site, that it's a tool, it will give you an incredible amount of information and the pulse of what's going on in the industry. I will tell you that something I discovered a couple of years ago, again, believe it or not, I talk a lot, but I'm, I'm understand the power of listening. So I would go listen to every piece of information I could get and I would like things. Then I started sharing things. And I started following a couple of people like this group called Community of Seven. There's another group called Leadership First. I'd follow the Harvard Business Review. I would follow a handful of things that I really, really enjoyed. Then I go in my feed. So in your, when you log in in your newsfeed and you're seeing what so-and-so did and what so-and-so did, all business, what they all did, and you see something that resonates with you that matches your core values or who you are or what you wanna say, I just hit the share button and that's all I do. I don't say anything. I just hit the share button that goes out into my network as something that I shared, but because people are going so fast, I get messages all the time. Shannon, that was the most inspiring thing I've ever heard. I love what you just wrote. And I'm like, thank you, but <laughs> I didn't write it. I just shared it from community of seven. So it's a way to, get out there, try and use LinkedIn without worrying about, oh my gosh, what do I say? Because nobody wants to get on social media and look stupid because you've done a great job of running your business. Why would you stand up on the internet on something that you don't know how to do? This is a great way to get in and show up and be seen. And you'll be surprised at the amount of interaction or conversation or engagement that, that you get. So things that you can do as a company for content are things like show off your employees. You can do that on every one, but it's particularly cool to do here. You can also talk about product features like we've talked about. If you're having a company event, this is the place to talk about it. If you're at a trade show, talk about the show and what you're learning and how you're there to service your customers better and to get the latest and the greatest, like use it as a tool to say that you're doing this for your customers. This is a place that you wanna do your business updates. You can also share manufacturer content, news, and of course you can say we're hiring here because that's you know one of the features of it but just remember that linkedin is all business all the time when you are posting on linkedin this is the one platform that i found i did some research over 10 years worth of content and consistently really early in the morning and really late in the day is when you want to post on linkedin so keep your content professional don't post more than twice a week. That is, that's pretty much an industry standard that holds true no matter you know, what everybody's statistics say. Share early at lunch or at the end of the day. And um, typically Wednesday's best, but see what works best for you and just keep everything industry relevant and you will be successful at LinkedIn. Um, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile picture, please do that by the end of the week. Um, it, says uh, so many things from a psychology standpoint, if you don't put your picture up there, put a picture up there that looks like you don't wear a suit. If you don't normally wear suits, don't put your dogs or wear your sunglasses, like put a nice professional picture. It can be taken with an iPhone, just have a clean background. It doesn't have to be, you know, this amazing, you don't have to go spend $200 on the headshot. Just get a nice, clean, clear picture that looks like who you are today, not 10 years ago. And that's one simple tip that you can do to look and have a professional presence on LinkedIn. And if you'll fill out as much as you can on your LinkedIn profile, you're doing better than 40% of the industry. So um, I would recommend that you invest 20, 30 minutes in doing that. Can I ask a question here for you? Absolutely. Um, this might be a misconception, so I need you to set me straight here. So from what I'm just hearing, from what you're saying, 
would LinkedIn be more of a business to business type of tool and Facebook more of a business to public type of a tool or am yeah, more I, am I uh, missing that? No, that's exactly right. So you want to use LinkedIn for business to business conversations and um, you want to use that to talk to the A&D community. You want to talk, you want to use that for, um, you know, if you do any multifamily or anything like that, there's your homeowners are not following you on LinkedIn. This is more like, think about the information that you want peer to peer that you want people in the industry to see that's going on with your business or your vendors, or like I said, if your contractors or anybody that's everybody but a homeowner, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. You're doing a good job. You're 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 getting me set straight here. Good. My wife's tried for a long time and it's it's not sinking. So you're I think you you're getting me past it here. There's a lot to this. And you know, I can't hear anything my husband says. If you tell me the same thing he said, I'll listen to you, but I can't listen to him. Um, I think <laughs> it happens the minute you sign that marriage certificate. Okay, so YouTube is hot because it is owned by Google. Google loves it, and we all love Google because it jacks up our rankings. Um, so anything that you can do on YouTube, if you do a video, put it on YouTube first and then take that link or the actual video and post it on your other sites. Um, not a lot of dealers are on YouTube because it's a commitment because you have to do videos on a regular basis. But if video is your thing and you really connect to it, then I encourage you to get on YouTube because video is so hot and because it's really important to Google. Same kind of thing, like do videos of um, people, do videos of product, but also this is your opportunity. You can either do short videos or you can do longer videos. You could do a video on um, installing LVP because there's the, the weekend warrior that thinks he's gonna go to Home Depot and get a couple boxes. And by the time he gets his wife gets home at four o'clock from the mall, I'm told, I feel terrible, I'm over generalizing, but I'm not just get the, I'm not being, um, I'm not trying to leave anybody out. I'm just mostly trying to be funny. So the guy that thinks that he's going to get the LVP installed before his wife gets home from the mall at four o'clock, show how you actually install it. Because I guarantee you once they say, oh, I got to go rent tools. Oh, that looks hard. Oh, my back already hurts and I haven't even gotten out of the car yet. Or, you know, if the room is not square, it's not just slap this thing down and move on. So show how it's professionally installed and maybe that will keep somebody from trying to DIY it themselves and maybe you'll get an installation job out of it. You can do job site updates where you go through and have people follow along on a project. People love follow a project. Just make sure you don't show any OSHA violations and you don't show any behind cracks because nobody wants to see that. So um, <laughs> anything that you can do, that's, that's another version of telling a story. If you have a gorgeous design center or showroom, do a video tour of that. People love to know what they're walking into. If I know that I'm about to go spend $10,000 in my home and I can tell before I get there that it's a beautiful place, then that's already relieving my anxiety and that's less anxiety your salesperson is gonna have to deal with. This is a great opportunity if you have a story to tell, if you're a family business, you got history, and if the owner likes to be in front of camera, have a weekly monthly message or whatever a note from the owner and just talk about the business talk about the talk about anything that you feel like is representing your business you can do series of things to help keep you on track um, you can answer the questions that you get asked the most i tell people sometimes to put a a jar in your break room that your salespeople put the annoying questions that they get every day and then you can use that to create either videos or content because you know if one person had that question, somebody else is going to have that question and your salespeople will really like it when you say, hey, I'm going to put out some educational information out there so that hopefully these questions don't keep coming up and keep driving you nuts. Um, just we're going to address them with the public. Talk about how you do business. Talk about why you like a product one versus the other. Um, really anything that you can do that's professional that's in front of a camera. Again, you don't need to hire a film crew. You don't need a $10,000 camera. If you have one of the latest smartphones and the background is clean and there's not a lot of noise, you will be more successful than most in the industry. Okay, uh, you wanna be real. Don't, you don't have to be stuffy like a commercial. People don't trust that. So if you sneeze, keep moving. If you, you know, crack a joke or do, you know, if you're human, keep going. Um, keep the video short unless you're teaching something and, um, 
try not to get started and do one video and then run away because that that kind of translates into how you do business. Okay. I over I'm over talking and I'm looking at my time. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but feel free to ask me any questions about this at any point. If you will take some of the topics that you learned today, take six of them and say, I think I can do those, make a list of those, put them on a calendar and say on Mondays, I'm going to talk about product on Wednesdays. I'm going to talk about culture and on Fridays, I'm going to talk about the dog. That will help you be more successful in getting content out without going that thing that everybody does, which is they stare at their computer Monday morning and go, I have no idea what to say. The more you pre-plan, the better your whole experience is going to be. If you will plan things out and use software, I use a software called Loomly, L-O-O-M dot L-Y. It's the same like is, you know, you might have heard of Hootsuite or Sprout Social or Later or some of those. It's the one that I like because it's the easiest, most intuitive, and it's um, not very expensive. The other piece of advice I'll give you for time management really quickly is if you get fired up after this and you want to make a list of 10 things, whenever you get fired up, make that list. Keep a list somewhere in your drawer on your phone so that when you get inspired, you'll have some content ideas for later. And just start slow, do the best you can, and only do what you can plan to do well. Okay, hot button is reputation management. It is important to know that people are talking about you whether you want them to or not. So I encourage you to go to your Google listing, see how many reviews you have, go to Yelp. Even if you did not set up an account, people can talk about you anyway. Decide if you are going to engage in this process or not. You have the choice to not do it, but I encourage you to do it and just see what's out there. And if you have an issue, then keep listening. You're gonna to wanna to respond to both positive and negative reviews. If someone takes the time to write a positive review about you, you can take the time to be courteous and say thank you. That shows kind of who you are and how you run your business. Um, it's also just good, you know, courtesy human behavior. When you get a negative review, do not take it personally. Read the thing, take a deep breath, go to the warehouse and then come back. Do not start typing while you are angry. Realize that people are frustrated. They are coming at you for something that has probably nothing to do with you and take the opportunity to proceed with compassion and explain what happens so that other people can see it. It's okay if you have a problem, if your business has a problem, just say you had a problem and say you're sorry. If you made a mistake, say you made a mistake. If you didn't make a mistake, do not take ownership for a mistake that you didn't make. Set the record straight, but be kind. There's no reason to be a jerk on the internet to another customer because that just teaches people that somewhere deep down they're gonna get treated like a jerk. Offer your sympathy, but don't reward people for the sympathy. Don't say, I'm so sorry you had a bad experience. Can I give you a gift card to go out to dinner? All that teaches people is to complain so that you'll give them a gift card. Be sympathetic, address the concern, offer a resolution without giving things away. Try to respond in a timely manner. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with saying, this is a really important matter and thank you so much for bringing it to our attention please contact me at this email address, preferably the owner, whether it doesn't matter who answers it or not, just say it's the owner because everybody thinks the owner can do something that the actual person that's gonna handle it isn't gonna do. And try to get it offline. Try to show people that are looking that you handle issues that come up because it's okay to have problems, but try to take it offline and get it resolved. You also can say things like, I have checked thoroughly in our files and we don't see your name we don't see any kind of job number related to you and we really want to make sure this gets resolved. So please contact us so that we can figure out how to help you. That lets other people know that chances are that person that, you know, people, your competitors are going to hire their teenage kids to write bad reviews about you with fake profiles. Instead of getting mad about it, use it to your advantage to flip it around and show how you do your business and how you are as a human. For positive reviews, Always respond, say thank you. Don't cut and paste the same response over and over because that makes it look like you, it's, you don't care about the difference. Um, try to just change it up just a little bit. Say that you appreciate them taking the time. You look forward to servicing them again. Um, and again, you can have a template, but you got to change it up a little bit. It can't be cut and paste, cut and paste of the exact same thing. 
if you don't remember anything else about reputation management, dig deep if you have to, but get your inner good human out before you respond to anything. Put your customers before your ego, have a plan, have reasonable expectations, do the best you can, and that needs to be enough, and utilize time management best practices so that you don't get so excited when you get off this webinar and then get frustrated down the road. If you will just slow down again and do the best you can and put out quality content the best that you can, you can add more later, but try to have fun, try to remember that it's all about your customer and try to remember that it's all about conversations that turn into relationships that again, hopefully turn into referrals. So I fully recommend taking a shot of whiskey and two Advil after this. This was a lot of information. Please try to retain just the parts that resonated with you. And you can go back and see these slides at any time, listen to this at any time. You can reach out to me, pun intended, um, via email, text, um, check out the website. Um, I put out articles and videos on floor covering weekly all the time that give you free advice along the way. Um, send me your pages and I will like them. I will follow them. I'll do the best I can to, to like them, you know, things when I see them. I will help you succeed in any way that I can. And because y'all are a fantastic audience attached to a fantastic company, um, I want to offer that the first 10 people that reach out, I will give you a free hour consultation. That's a $250 value to thank you for your time, your commitment to your social media, for your brand, and to help you succeed. And I want to thank everybody at Q Floors for the opportunity. I really appreciate getting to, to educate everybody today. No, it's awesome. We've been talking with Shannon Vogel, who's the owner of Reach Social Media, and it's been great to have you. I mean, you're talking to me, right, first and foremost. Um, yeah. I, I've noted a few things down here that I I know I can do better at, and uh, uh, these are some really great tips and uh, advice on how we can do better in social media, how we can connect. I, I mean, that's the biggest thing I'm getting out of here, uh, Shannon, is, is a way to connect with people and um, in a more human way. Um, it's not, you're talking to an engineer here, right? So this is kind of yeah. like anti, my anti thing. I connect with my computer too much. And uh, so it's, it's been really great um, to uh, talk to you today. If you have any uh, further questions or uh, for, for Shannon, you for sure, here's her information. You can reach out to her and she can customize the response exactly to your company. So thank you so much for everyone. And uh, we will see you here in a couple of weeks. Uh, keep your eye out and we'll uh, give you uh, the rest of our webinar series. It'll be coming up here in the next couple of months. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. See you online.